It's story time with Mr. Burnett. Story time with Mr. Burnett. It's bound to be something that you won't forget too soon. Poetry written by Shauna Lovoy Reynolds, illustrated by Sharzad Maidani. Poetry written by Shauna Lavoy Reynolds, illustrated by Sharzad Maidani. The snow had melted. The buttercups were blooming, and Sylvia celebrated winter's end by writing a poem about spring. She walked with Shell to the park at the top of the hill and read it to a squirrel. Spring is here at last. I hope it doesn't end too fast. Like a bee, I'll sniff each flower, and I'll enjoy each springy hour. So much. The squirrel seemed grateful. Sylvia tied her poem to a birch tree and headed home, hoping that it didn't count as littering if it made the world more splendid. The next morning, Sylvia passed the birch on her way to school. From a distance, she saw her poem fluttering in the breeze. But when she got closer, she realized that it wasn't her poem at all. I think spring is the best of the seasons, for plenty of excellent reasons, like birdie parents building nests where all the baby birds can rest and play. Sylvia's heart did a somersault. She never imagined the tree might write back. In class, Sylvia daydreamed about her new leafy friend. Sylvia, please pay attention, said Mrs. Oliver. Yes, yeah, Sylvia, whispered Walt, the boy sitting behind her. Their classmates giggled, and Sylvia sank in her seat. After lunch, Miss Oliver taught the class about haiku. Sylvia struggled to contain her excitement in seventeen syllables. White birch on the hill speaks out loud through rustling leaves. Great green poetry. Miss Oliver gave Sylvia a gold star. When the bell rang, Sylvia ran straight to the poetry. She folded her haiku into a paper boat and pushed it halfway into a knot hole. So, what's your name? Sylvia asked the tree. But the tree stood in silence. Are you shy like me? The tree nodded in the breeze. Sylvia understood. That night, Sylvia dreamed of rhymes falling like autumn leaves. She dreamed of cheerful songbirds greeting her in perfect rhythm. On Saturday morning, Sylvia rushed to the park with a heart full of hope. The knot hole was empty and she saw no note on the branches. But the whisper of the wind in the leaves above her was like a poem. Sylvia looked up and saw fragments of sky peeking through the treetop. She spoke the words as they blossomed in her mind. Sky so blue, grass so green, tree so tall in between. Favorite friend in morning light and under moon glow late at night. Sylvia selected a twig from the ground and gripped it like a pencil. By Sylvia, she wrote in the air, but that didn't seem right. Love, Sylvia. She waved her stick with a flourish, accidentally hitting a branch. A tightly folded ninja star fell to her feet. 
Sylvia couldn't unfold it fast enough. I've wondered a while, can a tree and a child be friends? Your words give me hope. Sylvia felt a spark in her heart. Good thing she brought sidewalk chalk. She scrawled in big blocky letters so the birch could see. I never thought that I would see such lovely poems from a tree. I wish that I could climb and live among the words you love to give. But if I lived up in a tree, I sure would miss my family, especially Shell. Sylvia thought it was the greatest thing she had written in all her years. She wrapped her arms around the poetry It was stronger, wiser, and kinder than the children at school. Like, you remember that kid that kept snickering at her? Stuck his tongue out at her when she got the gold star? She's probably thinking about how he treated her. She knew she would always have a friend at the park. She didn't open her eyes until Shell barked. Walt was there, staring at the ninja star haiku sticking out of Sylvia's pocket. Wait, that's the kid that was just sticking his tongue out at her when she got the gold star on her poem. That's not for you, that's for my tree. Sylvia blinked. It was from the tree, just for me. Walt shook his head. Celia didn't understand. Had the tree she loved so much not given her a thing? Sylvia didn't want to cry. Not at the park. Walt didn't want to cry either. I'm sorry I was mean at school, he said. Sylvia smiled. A friend of the tree is okay with me. She could never resist a good rhyme. Walt read Sylvia's chalk poem out loud. You're a wonderful poet, he said. You deserved that gold star. But who is Shell? Sylvia pointed. My best friend's name is Shell. I think he likes the way you smell. I can tell, added Walt. (laughs) The two poems giggled. Can I borrow your chalk? Walt composed a new poem next to Sylvia's. Let's see what that is. If you want to share a poem with me, give it to the tall birch tree. Or, if you need a friend for writing, playing with, or sit beside Ing, I'll be here for you joyfully, right beneath the poet tree. The new friends sat a while, side by side, backs against the birch. Sunlight and shadows danced through the leaves above them as they silently searched for the most marvelous words to describe it all. And that's the end. New friends, like the perfect rhyme, are found in unexpected places. What a sweet story. It's a story about the, the the peace and quiet and reflection that we can enjoy in nature. And it's also a story about how we kind of sometimes don't understand each other because we don't really get to see each other in the right way. Nice story. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me.